When it comes to databases, most developers are familiar with the relational database, MySQL, Postgres, MSQL, and so on. However, none of these options, if you think about it, are available truly serverlessly. So one of the strong alternatives to a data store that is serverless is DynamoDB. And not only that, it took me building serverless applications to really dive into using DynamoDB in a big way. And to be honest, I should have done so a lot sooner. Now, this video isn't going to be able to go into all the intricacies and details about DynamoDB, but let's take a look at some of the differences between DynamoDB and your regular relational database. The biggest one is that DynamoDB is a managed service where you can either allocate a specific maximum amount of guaranteed operations to a table, but you can also turn on on-demand mode, which means you have essentially unlimited capacity for writes and reads to your database, and you only get billed on what is actually used, meeting those lovely serverless requirements. This also means that you never need to worry about scaling, sharding, replication, and all that other grunt work that needs to be done to create a fault-tolerant and recoverable database cluster. It's all done for you automatically. One thing you will see if you read documentation on DynamoDB capacity is that DynamoDB measures capacity in units AWS created called Read Capacity Units, or RCUs, and Write Capacity Units, or WCUs. The way this is calculated is if you read one row of data up to four kilobytes in size in one second, this is a single RCU. If you write one row of data up to one kilobyte in size in one second, that's a single WCU. Most single rows of data never get bigger than one kilobyte, so if you take a rough estimate with the amount of reads and writes you expect your application to do per second, you can get a rough estimate of the RCU and WCU you need. Another big difference is that DynamoDB is a NoSQL key value store. If you like writing SQL queries and joins, I'm afraid you will be a little disappointed. You do not access your data using SQL, but by passing a query object such as this via an API call to the DynamoDB service. And your queries can only be made on data that is indexed, which makes DynamoDB blindingly fast. We are talking single-digit millisecond query times, pretty much guaranteed as well. Not joking. However, this blinding speed comes at a cost, flexibility. As I said a few seconds ago, you can only query your DynamoDB table on its keys. A DynamoDB table only allows you to have one primary key and five other potential indexes, which sounds incredibly limiting, but bear in mind that in a microservices environment, we know all the potential queries that will be performed on our data. So planning our table structure in this and other cases becomes a lot easier. And here is where you need to look at your database solutions as to what fits the right purpose. Personally, with DynamoDB's ability to scale and handle load and the guaranteed query times, even if I wasn't writing a serverless application, I would consider it, because it makes a really good transactional database. In other words, it's handling those quick queries to a database that we can plan for since we built the application. Whereas, if we required some way to build an analytical or reporting engine on top of the data to create reports specifically for users, well, then a good old relational database will prob probably be better suited with its query flexibility. Lastly, you may be familiar with the idea of database triggers in the SQL world. Little snippets of code you can have execute when a specific database activity occurs. Well, DynamoDB offers something similar, but far more powerful. You can stream changes to your database directly to Lambda functions. This is a feature we will see in this course as well, but it takes DynamoDB to another level of possibility. If you want to know more about DynamoDB, here are a few resources, and it will be in the description of the video as well. DynamoDB Guide was created by one of the serverless engineers, Alex Debris, and the video is to Rick Houlihan's talk at AWS reInvent in 2018, talking about DynamoDB in detail.